Soil School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by the Ontario Soil Network and the Mosaic Company. Bernard Tobin on the Soil School today, joined by uh, Dr. Marin McRae. She is with the uh, University of Waterloo's Department of Geography and Environmental Management. Marin, thanks for stopping by. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, you uh, a lot of a lot of your work focuses on phosphorus, and uh, that's what I want to talk about today. Um, you know, it's a critical nutrient for crop production, but it does have its environmental challenges and. Uh, Farmers and government have been working, oh, five, ten years now to get a handle on things and make sure we're managing things better, phosphorus. From your perspective, how are we doing today? Are we better? Uh, and and in, in what ways? Um, I do think we're better. I think we've learned a lot. I think that there were some really innovative people long ago who were doing some of these right things and we uh well we've been we've been doing a lot of edge of field and on-farm research and working together as a community to understand what is working what isn't working as well um and getting more of that information into the hands of those who need it and i think more and more People are adopting BMPs or um, best management practices, and I do think we're further ahead. I do think we have more work to do, but I think we are definitely doing a better job. Hmm. So let's talk about, I guess, some of those, I I guess, the challenge and, uh, you know, two parts of this, right? There is there is a phosphorus surface. Um, and how it leaves the field, and then subsurface. Talk about what we've learned, I guess, you know, uh, from runoff on the field versus through tiles. Sure. So I think some of that is is really where a lot of this work that uh, certainly that my team has been doing over the last probably decade or so began was to try to understand that tile drain story um, and just what was the contribution or the relative contributions of uh, surface runoff and subsurface runoff in terms of the phosphorus story. And so I think what we've learned is we have learned that phosphorus leaves the fields both in the surface and in the subsurface. Now, we know that probably about 20% of runoff or of of the water leaving the fields leaves on the surface and a solid 80% of the of that water leaves in tile drains, tile drains. So a lot of it really does travel in the subsurface and that happens year round. Even if you can't see it, it's still flowing. But when we look at how much of the phosphorus is actually being delivered, we do find that it depends where you live. And so in places like Midwestern Ontario and some of the rolling topography like the silt loam and clay loam soils, in those cases, surface runoff is really where a lot of the phosphorus is leaving the fields. Whereas down, once you get into the clay plain down around Essex and areas like that, tile drains start to play a much bigger role in the phosphorus for a story Um, and and they probably are losing something like 80 percent or probably about 80 percent of the phosphorus is leaving the fields through tiles in that region so so really the partitioning of that water between the two pathways does differ depending on where you live now Marion, you talked about tiles and um you know come they they come out of under a lot of uh, scrutiny and uh, i'm just wondering you know what can we do to manage our tiles better what do we need to understand as farmers well i think the first place to begin is to uh, realize that we have to manage things in the surface and in the subsurface and we don't want to do something that is maybe going to control things at the surface but be at the expense of losses in the subsurface in tile drainage. So I think it's important to remember that we we need tiles because we need we need to be able to get on fields and drain fields in order to get a yield but we know that there can be environmental consequences and so i guess the the first thing is there are certain conditions under which tiles have larger consequences and so those conditions can sometimes relate to soil texture so where you live are you in the heavy clays or are you in the loamy the loamy soils which seem to be able to buffer it the phosphorus out a little bit more another feature that can really increase phosphorus loss in tile drain tile drains sorry is connectivity between phosphorus rich surface soils and the tile drains through uh, what we call preferential flow or macropores. So that can be wormholes, cracks, root channels, you name it. So if we don't, so there are certain conditions, like if you have really stratified 
high phosphorus soils at the surface, those are conditions where if you have a lot of connection between the surface and your tiles, that can rapidly enter tiles. So what we want to do is really disconnect that source from that pathway. And so some ways to do that would be simply to have lower soil P or manage the supply in your soil. So you can do that either by reducing your soil phosphorus or by applying it in subsurface uh, in the subsurface, like by banding. These are all sorts of things that we can do to reduce some of that, uh, either reduce that stratification or just sort of disconnect that supply from those preferential flow paths into tile drains. Hmm. So Marin, you talked about, you know, uh, subsurface banding here. What other best management practices um, should farmers be relying on and incorporating here? I mean, it really is comes down to good nutrient management, correct? Yeah, I think so. I think there are so many BMPs that farmers can choose from. There's ones that are on the field, there's ones that are at the edge of the field, and I often have people asking me, what's the number one thing that I can do to reduce phosphorus losses? I think I think there are some practices that are going to be more effective than others, but I think it's also important to realize that the more of these things that you can do, the better, because they have cumulative impacts they work together in a synergy to have a to you know if every little one has a little difference together they're going to have a big difference but i think probably the first place that i would start would be the four r's i would start with nutrient management and really limiting how much is in that soil to begin with because the more that's there the more you're going to lose both in the surface and in the subsurface so that's one of the the four r's another would be like i said subsurface placement by keeping it off the surface putting it in the soil. First of all, it's where the crop needs it. It's with the, the where the plant needs it, but also it's less likely to be connected with runoff, both at the surface and the subsurface. Um, timing of application is another one that's certainly important. Um, I think the later in the fall that if, if you do fall apply, um, the later in fall that you do apply, the more likely that is to connect with runoff. And certainly winter spreading should never, ever be done. It's, it's got to be avoided because that's probably one of the worst things that you can do. Um, but if you, if they, if we can get thing, if you are going to apply in the fall, getting it on as early as you can is ideal ahead of that wet season. But certainly I, I really do think applying it with seed at the time of planting is, is a really good thing to do. A final question for you, and that is, you know, looking forward, I'll get you, ask you to get your crystal ball out. Um, five, ten years from now, I mean, are these BMPs enough for growers to sort of to get the job done here? Do we need innovation? Do we need new products? Or is it just sort of, you know, stick to it and, uh, you know, you know, focus on those BMPs? Well, I think... I think we really are, have made a lot of progress over the last decade or even longer. There have been, there's been a really great community um, in, in the, the Lake Erie watershed, in Canada, the U.S., across Canada. There's, a, there's been a lot of information gained, and I think that we do have a good handle on what we need to do, and I think more and more people are doing it. I think... Um, I, I, I do think probably one of the big things that we have to get around over the next while is barriers to adoption. What is it that is preventing people from taking these steps? So have we gotten the information into the hands of the people that are making those decisions? And if they want to use a BMP and feel that they can't use that, what do we need to put in place to help people adopt those BMPs? I think that's something that's that's going to be really important in the next while. Mm. Well, Marin, I want to thank you for stopping by. I know neither of us, of us left our houses. That's what we do these days. We all stay home and talk to each other on our computers. But thank you very much for being a guest on Soil School. Well, thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure.